Okay, so Merry Christmas weekend, everybody. Uh, I'm Hannah Davis of Body by Hannah. I own a personal training studio in Cleveland, Tennessee. I have an online presence, online workout programs. I've been featured in many national publications as a fitness expert. And I'm here with Jessica Rumba, another fitness expert. So you're in really good hands. Jessica, tell us about yourself. Yes, I am Jessica Guthrow. I actually just changed my name to Guthrow officially. So I've been married. That's right. I need to remember that. (laughs) Yeah. um, So my husband is Brad Guthrow and together we run Live Lean TV, which is a free show on YouTube that's um, all about health and fitness, weight loss, getting lean and staying that way. Our philosophy is teaching people how to live lean 365 days a year. So there is no fluctuation. Um, So you can just be lean and happy and healthy all the time. So definitely watch our show. If you aren't watching it already, you can just go to YouTube forward slash live lean TV. And um, what else? I have like lots of programs online, especially for women. And uh, that's it. I do online coaching too. Yeah. So that this is an interesting talk time to talk about living lane 365 days a year because we just got through the the or we know we haven't made it through the holiday season yet. We Not still even. have we still have New Year's. Hello Aiden, thanks for joining. Um so confession time. Were yes. you perfect through the holidays? No. Well, I don't know. That's an interesting topic because to us mm-hmm. perfection is not like being perfect, meaning like never eating anything like bad, right? And we don't categorize foods as bad or good. I mean, I just think it's a really unhealthy way to live, to feel guilty when you eat something bad. And, then, you know, it's, it's just a really bad cycle. So what um, we consider being perfect is more like what most people would consider being reasonable. And so in that sense, I have been, you know, reasonable and enjoying things that I love in moderation. Yes. Oh, I like that. So um, we talked about this in a previous blab, how um, when you attach guilt emotions to what you're eating, it actually really kind of affects your your gut health and um, and it, you know, you're better off being reasonable and enjoying um, maybe guilty indulgences uh, reasonably. Yeah, the guilt is, I think, even worse for you than the food itself. Like all that um, stress that people create has to eat a sugar cookie is like worse than eating a sugar cookie. Right, right. So, hey, KP Kelly, thanks for joining again. Hi. Yeah, so, you know, it's that cortisol that yes. the stress hormone releases is going to more negatively impact you than that sugar cookie or whatever. So, um, it's a crazy thought because it's like, how do you let go of that stress, right? Because it's just right. seems like a natural instinct kind of thing. When you eat a sugar cookie, you're just mm-hmm. automatically going to feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, it's going to be yeah. good or whatever. But I think, um, like seeing the big picture and knowing that what you eat and what you do most of the time is what really affects your body. I think right. that's what helps me let go of the stress and realize that one cookie is not death to my fitness. Absolutely. So if you're, I always talk about the 80, 20 principle. And if you are, you know, really on it nutritionally and you're just fueling your body with nutrient dense foods and exercising a good 80% of the time, then that, that is totally going to overtake this, this 20% of indulgences. And, and then you can really enjoy the indulgences and know that it's not going to totally derail your, your diet. Thanks right. for sh- sharing, KP. Um, yeah. if, if guys, please do share this lab. We're about to get into, we're already talking about some good stuff. Um, how many of you guys like just totally indulged like crazy over, over Christmas holiday? Um, feel free to hop in the seat. This is a really casual lab today. Um, we do, we have some different topics we want to get through, but it's a really just casual. We figure people are kind of just hanging out on a on Saturday morning after maybe I don't know maybe a Christmas hangover and (laughs) we're just gonna get some fitness talk in yeah um so I think I also think I didn't you know I don't feel bad about anything that that I got into this this Christmas you know it certainly wasn't perfect and I definitely around the holidays drink more than I, I typically do. And I think that's what I feel 
the worst from. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it actually, like, affects your cognitive abilities, too. And I just don't feel as sharp. And I don't yeah. feel like my workouts are as um, as good. You know, I'm not. Yeah. It's I'm, a perfect not, excuse to not work out the next day. You know? Right, right. Um, but you know how I – do you change your training at all? Like, if you, if you just kind of feel lethargic, like, what do you – do you modify your, your workouts in a certain way? Um, to be honest, like I don't put as much of an emphasis on workouts like during this time, especially since we're traveling, we're staying at his parents' house. And so like, I'm not that, I'm not, like, you know, obsessive about like, I have to get my workouts in, you know, I don't feel like that at all. And surprisingly, Brad's not either because wow. he's more of a workout being than I am. But, yeah. During this week, we're both just kind of like letting it go, realizing that we'll work out when we can work out. And like this morning was great. I went um, out into the backyard with the dog and did like sprints back and forth. And oh. The best exercise we can get. You know? And then the day before, we went to the rec center and he played basketball and I did some weightlifting. So we're just kind of like getting in what we can when we can, but I don't right. particularly like think since I had some eggnog I have to do this many workouts you know it's right like, it doesn't work in my brain like that anymore yeah. which it used to and I think that that was more unhealthy that way right 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 and that's just what we were talking about the guilt of yeah. um it's like you know, those games just, you play with yourself yeah so it's better to attempt to live lean throughout the year and right. just live healthfully throughout the year so you don't have to stress you know when you go on vacation and and um go away for the holidays yeah and you um, know the 52 weeks in a year so one week like i mean the holiday is just one week i know but there's several like holidays i don't know uh, uh, <laughs> you know there's like so many throughout the year but i think a, a lot of people would say the holidays are like from thanksgiving to through new year's so well, it yeah, yeah, it's not even one week, it's like the whole time. But, you know, I actually made a video about this last week. I don't know if you saw this one on Living TV. The two worst things you can do during the holidays. And number one was like be super strict about everything. Just because, you know, like we talked about, it's going to have that emotional effect on you. Cortisol love is going to be up. You're going to just feel terribly guilty. And everything. But then number two is to be, you know, Frank the Tank and just freaking eat everything. Yes. You know, which obviously is not good for you. Everybody knows that. But yeah. I just don't want anyone to mistake our advice for, like, let loose, you know? Right. We want to indulge, but not, like, completely, you know. Just within, within reason, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Like, every meal doesn't need to be right. Um, go all out. I mean, you'll just feel disgusting, honestly. Yeah. KP mm -hmm. Kelly says, my family celebration is tonight and tomorrow. I will be indulging while you're all recovering from indulging. <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay. I just got to Naples, Florida with my family and we're here for a week. So I think I'm still, I'm still in, in it for the long, <laughs> the long haul. There's still alcohol in my future. <laughs> but, but the cool thing about being here is I'm really uh, motivated to work out and i um, Naples. I think I'll I'll be super active and um, I won't worry about it. Yeah. Two catered dinners and a bartender for both days. Casey Kelly. Wow. You know what I've That's noticed about like these times when when like overeating is kind of a thing. I've actually noticed that I feel stronger and more energetic for workouts afterwards. So mm -hmm. like the, I think that you know if you have the choice to work out or not work out, like now is the yeah, time to especially work out just because. You're going to be hitting PRs, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to have yeah. more fuel in your body that you can pretty much amaze yourself in your workouts. Like, most yeah. people probably think you're going to feel lazy and lethargic, but once you get your warm-up going, like, you will feel stronger than you ever have. Right. And that's probably because you have the additional carbs in your... <laughs> Tons of carbs and, like, yeah, mostly um, also higher protein because a lot of people are eating, like, turkey and ham and things like that, so... With that surge of carbs and protein, you're just going to be like rocket fuel, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ashley, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think the only thing that negates that is, like I said earlier, a lot of drinking. Oh, right. <laughs> be careful with the alcohol. You know, like, that's yeah. another thing too. Like, alcohol is actually more enjoyable in moderation than it is in excess. Like, I think that everybody so agree. When you over drink, you feel terrible. But when you drink just the right amount, you feel great. 
Right, right. Hey, Ashley. Um, no, we're we're just doing a special Christmas blab. Ashley asked, "Are we blabbing on Saturday now?" Um, the truth is, me and Jess typically, yeah, we're blabbing every Friday night at seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, however, I think we're gonna go with a new schedule in the new year. I don't know. We have to talk about that and see what works. What works for you guys? Then? Like what if everyone could like put their vote right now in the comments, like what's yeah. the best day of the week? Right. Like Fridays we realize people might be going out or have, you know, dinners out. So there might be a better night of the week that that we can <laughs> blab. Um, so we're thinking about that. We wanna Yeah. What? What's that? I kind of thought about Tuesdays. Like, I feel like Tuesday is a good day because, like, Monday's not. Because, like, everybody has yeah. the Monday blues when they go back to work. But Tuesdays, like, we're in the groove of things again. Like, you know, want to get workouts on track and everything. Right. Yeah, I was also thinking about Tuesday, either Tuesday or Wednesday. But Tuesday yeah. would be better because that's an earlier night for me. Yeah, in case people haven't planned their workouts and stuff, it's, like, you know, not too late but not too soon. <laughs> True. Yeah. What up, Chris? Thanks for joining. Please share the blab. We've been um, kind of confessing how how well or not well we've been eating. Your trainers have been eating over the holidays and um, talking about. Thanks, Ashley, for the feedback. So just talking about um, how we cannot just beat ourselves up over indulging, but to focus on staying on track in the long run so that you don't feel so guilty about the indulging over holidays um, and other times, actually. Actually, maybe we should can like uh, remember when you said confessions. Like, I wonder what we are that people consider healthy. Okay. Um, you want to start? <laughs> yeah, sure. My number one thing, and I requested this from his mother because she's like a good baker, is cherry pie. I freaking mm. love cherry pie, and I've had like three pieces of it already. Nice. <laughs> That's good. In one day? No, no. no it was it over three separate. We've we've been here four days, and that was three out of four days. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. Um, so I guess mine is in the sweet category too, because I, I, you know, I think my food really has been on track. I just enjoy um, healthy foods. I mean, there's definitely been some like burger fry days in there, but I, I typically have a burger and fries once a week anyway. That's kind of my cheap meal. So it's kind of stayed about that. And um, as far as dinners, you know, we've, we've still made you know like one night Nathan's family was in town and he made paella but he made it with brown rice oh, and like I mean so there we're still th thinking of healthier ways to make dishes like that but certainly on like the sweets front and on um, people baking us cookies and and I'm you know I have a if it's in my house I have a really hard time saying oh, really? that yeah so it's definitely the baked goods and the alcohol I mean, I just, even if I have two glasses of wine or something, and if, and if I have that consecutively, like over three nights, I just don't feel like myself. I don't feel like foggy or something. Yeah, I feel foggy. I don't feel as uh, energetic through the day. Um, and we talked about, I, I have switched up my training over the holidays to do more split training because I, I feel like I can handle that better. And I, and it's a good time for me to kind of cycle that yeah. that kind of training in. So I don't, you know, I'm not do like doing high style. intensity. Yeah. What's that? You normally do more like combo style, like full body. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, ha I have been probably for the past year. It's been yeah. since I've cycled through some split training. But mm -hmm. I just I just felt like um, lately I needed some split training in my life. <laughs> Yeah, whenever I have a chance to work out here, I'm like, well, I better do full body because I don't know how many chances there are going to be, you know. And if I'm only going to work out one or two days out right. of the week, be full body, like pretty much spend as much energy as possible. Right, but, and that and, and that, that typically walks, a lot of walks. Yeah, yeah, 
And that typically is the best way to work out. If you're like going on vacation or if you're, you know, out of your element for a while and you don't, you don't know if you're going to have a gym, um, it's best to do kind of body work, body weight workouts and sprints yeah. in the backyard and things like that. Mm-hmm. Run around um, with the dog. Should we talk about fitness gadgets? Did anybody get fitness gadgets for um, Christmas? Hold on. I'm going to try to change the topic here. I haven't done that yet. Let's see. Christmas. I was like reading up on some fitness gadgets like I started this and I was um there was one that was like amazing to me and like I would love to try it but I don't know what if it, anyone heard of it. What is it? Happy Fork. Uh what is it? Happy Fork. It's spelled H A P I yes. Fork. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. Oh uh, no, I haven't tried it. Um explain what it is. It it's um it's the, yeah, it's like a special fork that has electronics in it and it'll um, like kind of take data on how fast you're eating. And yes. then if you're eating too fast or faster than you want to, I guess whatever you said it at, it'll vibrate. Right. So, so like shake. <laughs> right. So um I'm gonna try this. So basically if you eat too fast, um it, it's not good for your digestion. And most of us do. We like scarf our food down. Easy when you're super hungry. Right. So you have to remember that chewing your food is like the first step in digestion and breaking down your foods and breaking down the nutrients for absorption. So um, it's really important to take your time and chew your food. So that's why that gadget is super cool. Um, I, I would love to try it. I guarantee you I eat too fast most of the time. I probably do, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, did anybody get any fitness gadgets? I want to know what you got. Yeah, I don't know. I was hammer, Oh, hammer and chisel. That's Autumn Calabrese's um, workout with uh, the other big guy on, on Beachbody. Sean. Not Sean T. He's... he's no, there's one other. He's like a little less. He, he doesn't, I don't think he has like a big program like those other guys, but he's, he's like insanely uh, built. He's more oh, like wow. bodybuilder type guy. So, so yeah, they have like a new, oh, that's what, you, it's a workout video, right? Is that right, Trek? New running shoes. That's always good. <laughs> What kind of running shoes? So, uh, you know, I think the Beach Body, it seems like to me that the Beach Body video series, although I have not checked them out, like I've not watched them. So um, I, I do like Autumn Calabrese. I think she puts good information out there. I don't know how um, affected it is somebody by what Beach Body wants to put out there. Because you got to remember, Beach Body is a fitness company that really, you know, wants to make money. So a lot of it is, is marketing and um, what, whatever's trendy. But um, I know, I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people that attend my classes do like Shanti's workout and they do Autumn's workout and, you know, they, they love it. So I think whatever is going to get, and that's why, you know, me and Jess, create videos and you know we want to be able to reach a larger larger audience and um we know our stuff is good stuff so i don't doubt that those those workout videos have some really great info in it and great yeah. workouts i just i love how much stuff is on the market now because anything that gets you to exercise more than you normally do is is positive i think you know even though right. some ads are better than others like i definitely Tried some gadgets that we consider a failure, but um, it's not really a failure that got you up off the couch and like trying something right. different. Totally. Um, Ashley, I got I have some Nike. These are Nike Lunars, but they're they're racers. I don't I don't know what the Glide Six <laughs> are, but I bet they they're cool. Um, so we got fitness shoes. We got videos. Did anybody get any like fitness gadgets, like a Fitbit? 
I know a lot of my clients requested Fitbits for Christmas, mainly because really? I, I, well, I was kind of pushing them to get Fitbits. I really think that um, you have to, most people don't get 10,000 steps in their day, not even 10,000. And that's like the minimum that we all should be getting. Um, yeah. So that, you know, let's say you're getting 6,000 steps a day. Well, think about how great of an impact those additional 4,000 a day in a week, in a month, in a year has on your body. I mean, that's literally pounds. It's pounds, yeah, pounds. right there. Yeah. So when this weight creeps up on you over the years, it's this little bit of extra activity that's going to make the bigger difference, not one workout or um, – so I've been really encouraging clients to focus more on getting at least 10,000. Ashley, you got to go for more. Ashley says she normally gets 8,000 a day. You got to get that 10. Yeah. So you can do and like running up and down stairs or mm -hmm. know, just take one walk around your block at your house. You could probably, you know, boost it. Yeah. It doesn't take very yeah. long, maybe 10, 20 minutes and you're there, you know? No. Um, 10,000 steps is about five miles a day but, which you know if you broke that up from morning to night it's yeah yeah amazing. yeah yeah so it's you know it's definitely harder for people that have an office job and you know they basically wake up they get ready they get in their car they drive to work they sit all day they yeah. eat lunch at their desk they hop in their car they go home they sit they eat dinner they oh, no. So I get it. So again, you have to like really, um, you have to schedule time and, yeah. you know, like I get up really early and I have, I was most worried about when I moved from New York city, not getting that movement in Yeah, New York city. I'm walking all over the place. Well, I got a dog. That's extremely helpful. So I oh, have, yeah. I have to get up 20 minutes earlier because I've got to walk my dog. Yeah. And, and walking my dog gives me 2,500 steps in the morning that I otherwise wouldn't have gotten. So I, oh, you know, I'm not saying you have to. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to get a dog, but like, there's no reason you can't make yourself get up 20 minutes early to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's so simple. It's like, it's almost too simple. I feel like that's yeah. why most people don't do it because they're like, that's too simple. That can't right. work. You know? yeah. We're telling you as, you know, professional trainers who've helped thousands of people lose thousands of pounds of body weight. Mm -hmm. This is one of those tricks that is tried and true. And like always 100% of the time works for people. Right. Right. Definitely um, don't underestimate a walk. Right. ATN Network. Uh, thanks for joining. I, anyway, I just locked the seat because uh, I think we're getting some like spammers in here. Uh oh. Okay. Or what? It, trolls. Trolls. But if anybody no, wants no, no, no. to, if anything, anybody wants to join, let us know. Um, other fitness gadgets. What's What's another one you're familiar with? Oh, um, I think. Well, I don't know. What do you think about body uh, analyzed? Um, I kind of think they're better than using my like body scale to track your progress. Mm -hmm. And then again, I feel like you can get obsessed with it and you know, it could be dangerous for It's nice to kind of figure out where your body fat's at. Yes. Um, now, Jess is talking about like a handheld. Are you talking about like the handheld Omron? Yeah. yeah Electronic. Well, types that I've tried and they're both, they both use electrical impedance. Okay. So the way that these work is it sends, you hold on till you enter this info, like your age, your height, um, your weight, um, your gender. Your gender. And then uh, you hold on to these electric sensors and it sends kind of an electric Im impulse through your body. It goes easily through uh, fat and water, like it's not impeded by that. And then it hits, you know, muscle, you know, organs, all the dense properties in your body. So that's how it measures your body fat. And um, I use them with clients and oftentimes I'll, I'll do like the calipers and I'll do the handheld just to see, cause I'm always like, how does this really work? I don't really believe this electric yeah. impulse works. But almost every time I get pretty much the exact same 
um, body fat to a degree. Reading. Yeah. 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 So Amazing. I think they're really useful. And I think um, they're, you know, you certainly can't, it's really hard to do your own body fat using calipers. So it's, a, oh, yeah. it's an awesome. Do you, do you know if the scale ones work? Like, cause you yeah, have some of the scale. Actually, that's, I forgot about that, but we do have a scale at home. We just recently got, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it definitely, it reads your body fat as well. And I find it's almost the same as the handheld one. Okay. Okay, cool. All you um, do is run and stand on it, you know, with bare feet. Yeah. And I, I would say the morning is probably the best time to do it, right? Before you've had a lot of water. Yes. You don't want to, you don't want to, um, right. You don't want to have a lot of water like in your muscle. Um, right. cause right. That kind of affects it. If you're, if you're oh, retaining really? water in your muscle, yeah, you're going to really, get a higher. That's, that's the one thing that has thrown my readings way off. And even like when yeah. I was at Equinox and we had like the most advanced machine, like they had this body fat analyzer that was like, five thousand dollar machine you know like super advanced and super accurate like if i would test that one day um, early in the morning before any food it would be completely different than if i did it the next day after lunch and it yeah was like completely yeah different reading so just you know if any of you are considering getting one of these electrical impedance just make sure yeah. that every time you measure it's the same time of day with the same amount of um, liquid and food and everything in your stomach yeah so this is something that's something i would highly recommend uh especially for women who get discouraged thinking that they haven't lost any pounds on the scale yeah it's just it's so it's i just can't tell yeah it is it's so deceiving and um i can't tell you how many times i have clients that are getting frustrated they're like but why isn't the scale going down i'm like just chill out wait we're gonna be doing our body fat you know in a week yeah and you know, these are women that really hadn't been weight training. So you're literally building muscle. And not only that, like when you first start building muscle, you are going to retain more water because your body, your muscle needs water in the body to repair and build muscle. So, um, you know, I, I really love the handheld uh, body fat monitors. So get one. It's like, they're not that expensive either. No, they're like 20 or 30 bucks, right? Yeah. And you can get it on Amazon. You can buy it used for probably yeah. $10. Yeah. Um, and what brand, what handheld brand do you like? I like Omron. It's O-M-R-O-N. That's yes. a really good brand. Um, I can't think of any others. That's like the one that comes to mind and that I've used for, I mean, we're talking 10 years of using this thing now and yeah. still love it. So. Yeah, definitely feel of that or a fan of that over a scale. I would definitely recommend if you're if your goal is to lose weight, like just really be sure that you're not losing water weight, muscle weight, you know, like right. I can't emphasize enough that what you want to lose is fat and right. fat only. Right, right. Um, ATWN Networking says, as a runner, I am on RunKeeper, target to hit 100 kilometers by 1st of January. Uh, just about on target. That's awesome. So let's talk um, running apps. I and, love Map My Run for sure. Yes. I've never heard of Run Keeper, but Map My Run is phenomenal. I used to use Run Keeper, and I loved Run Keeper. I almost uh, love it more. I've been using the Nike Run app lately. Yeah. And the only reason I switched is because I like, this is so crazy mental, but I like how the Nike run keeper counts you down. So <laughs> I'll start running so that it, it starts the run, like when I'm at my pace, my beginning pace and the run. Uh -huh. So I feel like I know my truer pace. Uh -huh. because I'm start. Does that even make sense? It's just like craziness. I don't know. Um, I've never tried it. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I love it, all things networking. Uh, yes, how do I like the Nike app? I, I mean, I've been using it more often than RunKeeper, but I really did love RunKeeper. So yeah, um, the Nike app also allows you to kind of track what type of ground you were running on. So if you were trail running or road running or that sort of thing, and then it lets you track your like how you felt 
and what the weather was and things like that. And for me, that's important because I try to figure out why in the world did I have such a, a crappy day running? Like, why did I feel like crap? And, you Not know, enough. yeah, yeah. So I, I really like it. Um, it may sound silly, but I love that I'm in Sydney, Australia, and my brother is in the UK and can live view my runs and text me encouragement. Yeah. That's so amazing. It's live too, like during your run. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So I know the Nike app does that, but does the run keeper do that? I think it does do that actually on the elite app. You have to pay, you have to pay for that. Yeah. Is that right? But that's By the way, like a huge feature though. Like, cause if that means a lot to you and you're going to run yes. more or harder because of it, then that's, for sure worth a couple of dollars or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And she's saying it's just one, one payment. By the way, yeah. Sydney is beautiful. I love Sydney. I'm jealous. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Um, oh. And you see him work out and then you think you should see that's awesome. That's like a nice, like friendly competition. I think that's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Especially on days when you feel like running and you saw that he did, it's like, you have to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So um, so what other run apps are, there's also, um, map my run and walk and map my walk. So don't underestimate the power of walking. If you don't like to run, walking is awesome. Um, oh, cool. I'll, I'll check that. I'm going to copy that so I can check out sunset in Sydney tonight. How fun. <sighs> Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, these apps monitor your walking as, as well. And they're very, very useful. What other fitness gab gadgets? Let's, we talked about Fitbit. No, I, Fitbit. I would love to know if there's, if anyone's been using a good one for lifting or for like keeping track of your <sighs> lifting workouts, because it's like all these apps are for running and like you yeah. know, cardiovascular exercise, but I would love to know if any of you have used one for weightlifting. Well, Jess, you know, that's kind of like the newest science right now, or I guess tech, uh, fitness tech that's kind of developing right now. Have you, have you seen this, um, smart shirt? Oh, so basically it's a, Seen something like that it has sensors in it yes so it has sensors in it to to be able to tell you if your form is good yes and i think it can tell you um better more more uh, correctly uh how many calories you're burning all right and then it also tells you your intensity level right yes yeah um, so I have yet to try any of that out and I think it's still kind of developing technology. So I think some are better. Athos? What's that? Is the name called Athos? There are a couple of them. That might be one of them. And, and one time Brad tried some shorts. They were like, um, you know, kind of like biker shorts. Yeah. Index, and they had sensors in them. And when he would squat, they would show exactly which muscles were firing. Yeah. Like how intensely the contraction was. It was so cool. So did it work? Did he feel like it worked? Like, oh, yeah. Because, you know, we're trainers, so we can see when a squat is proper or not. Like, yeah. so we're you know, looking from the outside, and whatever the app was saying was, like, right on par with what he was feeling and what was what we were seeing. It was yeah. so And the app is fun to watch, too, because the muscles will light up, you know? When yeah. you're using quads, they'll, like, light up different colors. It's so cool. Do you know how much, like, a pair of those shorts run you? expensive i'm sure i mean yeah i think it was still a prototype when you tried it so they weren't even on the market but i haven't even looked yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um guy your master is that how you say that um daily burn i'm actually very familiar with daily burn they uh a while back when they first got started um i was talking with them about being a trainer on daily burn and then yeah really random i mean this is years and years ago um but then i actually had to that's i took off for australia for uh seven weeks so the timing just didn't work out um but daily burn has a cool i guess what they're still doing is you 
you work out to the with these trainers and it count does it count your rep and count it I, somehow it figures out your intensity i think they have like trackers you put on yourself but it's like hooked up to your smart tv and wow. um and what do you mean by it got too commercial i'm curious hi miss graham thanks for joining guys feel fr free to share the blab we're just gonna blab away <laughs> yeah it's gonna be on my youtube channel later too yeah um, so yeah, I'm curious what you mean by it got too commercial. Is, is, does anybody want to hop in and talk about their fitness gadgets? Mm -hmm. And does anybody else use their, there are a lot of um, fitness channels these days that you can subscribe to. I mean, yours is kind of like that too, Jess, except for you mm -hmm. do a lot yeah, of workout. free info. You guys yeah. should free info and like a lot of our um, episodes are about nutrition but there's definitely a whole lot of workouts on there especially ones you can follow along like 10 minute workouts or four minute workouts for free but um, I would say our main mission with that channel is education like we're trying to educate people about mm -hmm. what the right things to eat are and the right ways to work out but we definitely throw in some free like do this workout with us kind of things here and there yeah, yeah, I love that. Uh, Miss Graham asked how we feel about Shakeology. Do you know what Shakeology is, Jeff? Yeah, I've looked into it a couple of times just because I've gotten this question from clients. And what I usually say is that I prefer you just have plain, like, whey isolate and mix it with your own, like, fruits, veggies, stuff like that. Because Shakeology just has a lot of other stuff in it. Fillers. Um, yeah, and I'm not a big fan of that. So yeah. Yeah, ditto. We've we've talked a lot in the past about different um, shakes and juicing and things like that, and and how we feel about that. So, um, all of our blabs, all of our past fitness blabs, are up on Jessica's uh, YouTube channel. So, find it. Google. Um, is it going to be Jessica Guthrow now? I'm oh, so confused. I don't know yeah. if I'm actually able to change it. <laughs> But they'll try, actually. But still, yeah, look for Jessica Rumba, and then for now, you know. Another thing, Miss Graham, if you if you mix your own veggies and fruits in there with it, you're gonna be getting the fiber from all those, like just natural. You know, it's just gonna be absorbed in your body a lot more efficiently. So, um, what when you get a whey protein, just do you uh, look for? raw way no, actually no i don't yeah i don't like I've, the two things i look for is just that it's you know a whey protein isolate instead of a concentrate mm -hmm. and then also that it's sweetened with stevia instead of sucralose or right you know anything else other than stevia it has to be stevia for me because that's the one sweetener that you know is the healthiest and least chemical so that's about it to me. I want minimal ingredients, yeah. great isolate sweeteners. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Graham, hop in if you want. Um, and thanks, ATW Networking, for letting her know. Yeah, we locked the seat. We were getting a few trolls earlier. So <laughs> you never know. We locked it up. So, guys, that's important info. Every A lot of people want to know what kind of protein they should get. And a lot of people have a, a question about vegan versus um, oh whey protein i think that's an important question you're not going to get a, a, a vegan protein has a much lower bv value and that's bioavailability so your body does not absorb uh as many of the amino amino acids in the protein as it does with the whey protein so if you're not vegan or vegetarian um, we definitely recommend whey isolate proteins mm -hmm. And if you are vegan or vegetarian, then go with pea protein is the one I would suggest over like hemp to me is just horrible texture. I have yet to find a hemp protein that is actually like palatable because mostly they taste like sand to me. Just <laughs> And then also brown rice protein, same thing. They're just like they have a sandy, gritty texture. So the one plant based protein that I found acceptable is pea protein. Oh, cool. And that's P-E-A, not P-E-E, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I didn't know that. That's good. Good. Oh uh, yeah, I tried for a while. I actually like back in I think 2013. I did a fitness competition and I wanted to see what the results would be like. Diet. So it was great for four months, and I was having a pea protein supplement because man, it is so hard to hit your protein numbers. Yeah. Like, going for a certain specific macro breakdown it is hard without you know animal protein so I had stuff yeah when I could find that was decent and you did it though I mean you did it was just harder but you met your goals and yeah it was so harder guys, and you know what the number one thing or let's say there were two things I really disliked about it and one was like digestive discomfort just because from so much fiber because of the amount of beans and nuts and seeds and stuff that you have to eat I just felt so like bloated all the time and then also the number two thing was just like social um like separation I just felt like um like I wasn't able to go out to restaurants yeah yeah um I I want to that um, digestive discomfort I find very interesting. So uh, now's a good time for me to plug or drop in that I January 1st, hopefully it might be the first week of January. I'm launching my, I have an operation bikini body I gotta plug ebook yeah. that will, that's turning into a series. And so January 1st, I have operation bikini body abs that I'm actually giving away free for people what? on my only only for people on my newsletter so you have to go to bodybyhanna.com and make sure you're signed up on my newsletter and I'm only giving it for free like for one day so you have to so you want to be on I'm gonna I'm gonna try, let you join just a second Stephanie I'm gonna finish this comment and then join you in um, so bodybyhanna.com get on I mean it's an awesome ab ebook but one thing that I talk about in it is, you know, kind of the digestive discomfort you can get from healthy foods like beans yeah. or, or lots of cruciferous vegetables. And so how to how to um, eat either eat that in moderation or or um, combine it, um, how to, you know, like if you how to modify it. So if you're eating raw broccoli, that's going to be a lot harder on your digestive system than if you steam it really well. Yeah. Yeah. So it breaks up some of that, that discomfort, but you know, it is so true that like you can even from healthy foods kind of get that, that bloatedness and discomfort and not have like this nice flat belly you've been working so hard on. So I, I my, know. my question for you is, how did you getting closer to the competition? How did you like get, did you then just stop eating those foods in the like lean out phase? Oh yeah. And that was like, that was really hard for me because I'm like, what the heck am I going to eat? You know, because yeah. normally my peak week diet would be, I usually do like a special peak week diet seven days before the show is really careful on um, avoiding yeah. bloating foods and all that stuff because the last thing you want is for your stomach to look distended when you're in a bikini on stage mm -hmm. you know what I mean no, no matter how hard you flex you're still gonna have this little like sticking out right underneath your belly button and right. so yeah I usually do just like basically chicken eggs sweet potato like I even cut out whey protein and any supplements any like protein supplements or actually any supplements at all just cut them all out in that last seven days. And it's a lot yeah. of water, super high on the water. And most people think it's the opposite because they think they're going to retain water if they drink a lot of it, but it's yeah. you actually flush more water. When you drink too much water, you'll flush it more rapidly. Right. So tons right. Of water. But then food wise, I think when I was doing the vegan thing and, you know, I do have notes on this somewhere so I could double check, but I pretty much ate like a lot of asparagus because that yes. is it's a diuretic. diuretic. It does not bloat you. Um, I had peanut butter and I think almond butter too. Like nut butters were easy for me to digest. Yeah. And then um, sweet potatoes and rice cakes. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. that's all I ate for that last seven days. And it was terrible yeah. because it was just, I wasn't getting enough calories. Yeah. So I felt really weak, honestly. Like, I don't know how people um, do vegan bodybuilding for a number of years because I felt so weak. Right, right. But people do. It's just a yeah. lot hard. I mean, it's very hard. So, yeah, that... 
all the, those ad tips are, are really interesting and they're all in my ebook as well. Like foods that get rid of bloating, foods that cause bloating. And um, cause a lot of times people don't realize how, how much effect that has on it. Um, if you want to hop in, Miss Graham, go ahead and hop in. Yay. I think it's so important to be really open and honest with people about like hey Stephanie hey hi ladies welcome we're so it's, good we're talking. good cool I love the bodybuilding culture <laughs> yeah I'm yes. a bodybuilder but I use like I'm an artist and I always use it for like it's just instead of watching other artists get motivated to do work I just watch you guys because it's like another medium in another way because I'm always so yeah sad. yeah like just like Ooh, in the I gym like, like if the guys are like, or the girls like, I have a competition, like they'll be like one size and like come back and they're like, sites so was like, oh my God, you guys are like magicians. Like complete transformation, huh? Yeah, it's yeah. so crazy. And it just like shows you like the body can do anything. It, no. That's so true. It really is kind of a form of, of, of art. art. Oh, God. Because, it is. You're, and look, because it's not easy. Well, like, your body and which don't. Yeah, that's. That's yeah. your, um, it, they call it your paint brush, like the weights and the food are your paint brushes and your body is the canvas, you know? Right. right. Yeah. I so believe that when I see people. So that's awesome. So I'm like, yay. Okay. When I see you guys talking, I'm like, yeah. And what kind like, of, I feel like from bodybuilders over like, I mean, it's interesting. Like, do you both train? Are you both bodybuilders? We're, oh. we're both personal trainers. Yeah. Um, Jess has done a few competitions, competitions in her day. Yeah. I have not. I, yeah. I don't think I have the discipline. <laughs> yeah, you've never done one. But, like, I'm telling you, Hannah could do one because, like, she's in that kind of shape. But it's just, like, a different yeah. of getting on stage and not getting on stage. still, like, you know, lifts weights and does all the training, the same thing that I would do for a show, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think I just don't have the, you know, like, when you tell me, yeah. that oh you have it basically that leaning phase where I would have to like avoid stuff I don't like for people to tell me I'm not allowed to like yeah. have something so no, I, I would rebel yeah. I would I'd have a hard time with that but, <laughs> yeah. cool. well while I had you ladies here I want to see if I could show you some stuff that I had and you guys tell me if you think it's good or not since you guys are the pros okay cool <laughs> I'm so excited <laughs> what do you have? What okay, kind of artist so, are you, Stephanie? What'd you say? What kind of artist are you? I do photography and video work. Very cool. Yeah, oh, nice. Like right now, it's just been on, like, you know, uh, relationships and then being black. <laughs> right. Very cool. So, like, I have cool. a project about, like, um, women just sharing. Like, the more, like, commercially type project I have that's probably more relatable is a project called So This One Guy, and it's, like, women just sharing dating stories. Yeah, cool. Where can you find that? That's fun. Um, I have them on my website. I have a website, MissGram.com, and then I have some of the videos. I'm revamping the website, but um, so guy.com you can see them put that in cool yeah cool thank you um okay yeah so all right this is what i have because i tried this, this is fun yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, okay so i signed up for shakeology now number one as an artist and i freelance like they just took like a hundred dollars out of my account and i'm like oh Ooh. hell no uh-uh this is too expensive i'm not gonna be used to it I can't have you guys debiting a hundred dollars. Is it? Yeah. No. Is it recurring? Yes. Oh. I saw Every month. I'm like, oh hell no! I'm calling you guys first thing Monday morning. This has got to stop. That's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like I wasn't. Even, I don't even really necessarily like the shake that much so I haven't been drinking it so like probably if I was drinking it every day like I should be maybe I would be out because I have so many packets yeah and yeah I've been like oh, I'm not really too sure because of the filler so I'm like let me just maybe drink what I have or just stop unless somebody else says oh I want to try it then I have them they can take them yeah but so I have that one um oh my gosh it's so pricey so I have the yeah shakeology which you guys are like no so yeah i'm not gonna use it anymore yeah but the thing is is that i like the um the coach that i'm with i like her but i'm also not like 
that great with um like follow along like if i was gonna have a trainer i think i'm much more accountable with meeting someone yeah you know, it's having to check into a facebook group and tell everybody what i did yeah it's not always on facebook you yeah know? Yeah. So like, I don't go on there to necessarily interact with like friends and family, let alone a check in on a group. So yeah, no, that's true. It's always more helpful to have a more face to face accountability. And you know, sometimes Facebook group really does work for people. I've seen it where you know they they really do. Um, not for everybody. I I think it works well for over sharers. People, not that there's anything wrong with that, but people that are yeah. over sharers, like they really. <laughs> you know, <thrive. laughs> yeah, um, you know, like I'm in a, I'm in some Facebook groups, like just for art and stuff, where it's like nice, like if I like on my free time, I can go in and engage with people. But like having to use it as like a daily accountability, log into Facebook, like I wouldn't do that anyway. So, right. Um, but I do like the containers that they have for like eating. Yeah. Is this like Even the yeah, autumn? Is this like the autumn Calabrese containers, like the portion control containers? Yeah, like these containers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Small Tupperware that's, like, color-coded? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's helpful. I think it's helpful, too. I think, it. you know, it depends on, again, your activity level. And, I mean, how are you going to – let's say, you know – I mean, not everybody fits in those containers, right? Like, if you're going to have a slice of pizza, how do you know? <laughs> do you just have to, like, tear it up and put it in the container and so. make sure it fits? <laughs> Like, I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> I know. Oh, I guess it's like, look, if you can't rip it up and put it in here, don't eat it. Yeah. I guess just eat something else. Good point. Good point. Yeah, you gotta eat something else. <laughs> 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 because really it's worse. like, I'm trying to lose weight. It's like, when people are like, oh, you can still eat anything. Like, that's not the case. Right. You know? Right. Like, that's a lie, man. Right. That's a lie. I try. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, so I have this. The... <laughs> Okay. Let's see, vanilla. Does it is it say whey protein isolate on there? It says it's the J Rob whey protein. Oh yeah, it says whey whey isolate. Yeah, that's what we are. Uh, is whey like wheat? Yeah. No, no it's animal no. protein. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad I asked that because I. Like I've been trying to stay away from wheat, and then I would see whey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See how that would be okay, that's good to know. So this yeah. is probably good. Yeah. yeah, it comes from milk, and sometimes people who have dairy intolerance can't handle it. But I would say the majority of people are fine. Yeah. Okay. I would and make that. <laughs> would you make like yeah. a ball yeah. it, like roll it up <laughs> yeah I know that's hilarious Ashley <laughs> and then I think um, alright so I think that J-Rob one was okay and then do you guys like these girls the perfect fit girls oh yeah I think I have tried that actually that's, isn't it like I have not protein and stuff plant based protein 15 grams uh, vegan or gluten free well, but it's just okay. Yeah, yeah just okay. Not great, right? Yeah. Well, and we talked about how um, vegan protein really isn't going to be absorbed as well into your body as as protein. All those amino acids aren't as easily absorbed into your body. So that's why the whey protein, that animal protein, if you're not vegan, is actually better for you for getting those those protein grams in. Yeah. Okay. I mean, food is still number yeah. one, but then whey protein yeah. is still number two. Okay, cool. Yeah, because like it. anything else I have was just like flaxseed and a side powder and spirulina, like stuff you just put the fridge. Yeah, that yeah, works. That's, yeah. yeah, that's great stuff to like throw in your your shakes, spirulina. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. What else you got? Are you doing any exercise to help you reach your goal? I'm trying. Well, you know what? I'm trying to. I like working uh, TV, and like we like work like uh, like 12 hour days, and then like I try yeah. to get off to go work on my art practice. So I'm yeah. trying to like, get in the habit of waking up early. Um, but like I already have to be at work at like seven, like yeah. seven thirty, eight a.m. Yeah. So I just haven't got got the mindset yet to like get up at five or like. Mm-hmm. What about um go to like ten at night sometimes? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. 
What about like lunchtime walks? Like, can you go out at lunch and take a walk? Yeah, you know what? I can do that. And you know what the thing is? I think it's like you hear all this stuff that's like work out an hour, like do this kind of stuff. And it seems like this heavy, heavy stuff that it's like the simple stuff, like taking a walk. It seems like it's not relevant. Like it's not it's doesn't, simple, doesn't and, it? So and funny. we just were talking about yeah, that. I think that was before you. Yeah. I think that was before you signed on, but we were talking about how people think, oh, well, it's just like a little walk. How is that going to make a difference? But the reality is over the course of a week, over the course of a month, over a year, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. And things like taking the stairs. Just from that. Yeah. The power of walking. Yeah. I, yeah, I need to hold on. I'm gonna back this. So I need to plug my computer in. So yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, we're all having to plug in now. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. If that's the only exercise you can fit in, like definitely do it. And and yeah. even like the five or ten minute walk is way more significant than. Two. So park your car farther away every time you go somewhere. Park farther away. You know, that'll automatically get more walks in your life. Yeah. Advice and then just like hearing that because it's like a certain place, you think like you should be at like a certain place in your life, like physically. And then if you're not there, you're like, oh, let me hurry up and do it. So, like, take me to the No, that's not enough, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not anything at all. So, that's good to think about like shifting that. Yeah. It kind of, you know, I always find that when people's motivation is high, they will find time. Like, it, there will be no excuses and everything. But when the motivation is low, they will find excuses. So um, if, that, if you find that that's your problem, maybe just spend more time thinking about your why or even creating yourself your own why. Like, for me, that's why I started competing and doing real bodybuilding stuff because I needed some sort of external motivation I didn't have it within me. Mm-hmm. And after so many years of doing that, then I finally realized it was within me. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm motivated with or without the show. So that's why I stopped doing shows, but I still feel motivated. Right. Yeah, maybe I need to do some type of body yeah, I mean, if <laughs> they have them for regular people. <laughs> they do. They have different um, categories. <laughs> so they have, like, beginner categories. Oh, oh they do. Amateur, yeah. They begin on their first show, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, Jess, have you been watching that sh- wor- show Workout on Bravo? No. Wait, is that the one with Jackie? No, 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 no. They, yeah, that was like ages ago, but they have one for New York City now. And like Holly, Holly Rillinger is in it, and um, a couple other girls. That. Like, you probably, if you watch it, you'll probably like see people you know. <laughs> wow. Do you like that show? Um, I don't, I, I, it's fine, but I don't like it because it, I don't think it focuses, I don't think it's gonna like change anybody's life like it, like it should. That's why we're in this business. And it doesn't focus at all on like the instructor or personal trainer client relationship. It's basically trying to create this like the drama that is the fitness industry in in New York City. And um, I wish I think they could make a great show if they centered it around like the client um, trainer relationships. And then they can throw in some other like drama in there. The instructor you know, in New York City, it's crazy, like, um, fitness instructors that, like, teach at Barry's Boot Camps or Flywheel or Soul Cycle. it's very competitive in that world, and they're, they're, um, they're kind of semi-celebrities in New York, so people, people will go to, like, Holly Rillinger is this really big Flywheel spin instructor, and it's so hard to get in one of her classes because she's like one of uh, she's like a celeb instructor in New York, and um, so it's just this interesting culture that really isn't so present in the personal training. In the personal training world, there's enough to go around. Like there's not a whole lot of um, competition, and we're all all trying to help each other. The good ones are anyway, you know. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just, it, it's a, intro, it's worth watching. Check it out. But it's not, I don't I think it's going to go it's more so, than a season. Yeah, it seems okay. like you want, like, that kind of relationship, like, TLC, TLC yeah. network, or, like, 
Like, yeah. Like, they're always, like, going to bring drama. Because, like, they even did, like, one, like, a long time ago about, like, galleries, about art galleries and, like, gallery girls. And, like, you thought How funny. I was, was going to see, like, all these people that had, like, these cool, like, who bought this awesome art. Yeah. So, it's like it wasn't. It's, like, gallery girls, like, fighting, like, in front of the past. It's just. Yes. So, it was so huh. cool. Right. Right. I can't right. believe people like to watch that stuff. It's like really. I know. <laughs> well, they like to just forget about their own problems. Yeah. So watching yeah. people have bigger problems than you have makes you feel like your life's easy. <laughs> right. Like even that one guy on like the workout, like he's hurt his shoulder. It's like, how's that healthy? And you like keep working out. Um, yeah. It's like I have to keep doing this. I need to. And it's like. Well, that's not really like a good thing to show, but I guess it shows like it does show like the real life about how competitive that world is and like right, right. Yeah. <sighs> so I want to see really quick then. Okay, this is my last question. Have you guys seen uh just as like an industry? Because I'm always curious about like other industries. Have you seen um do you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk? Yeah. Have you seen the video he put out about like like telling the mob? Telling what? It's like the fitness industry to set the, to step their game up. Oh, yeah. yeah, he like made like a video about like Instagram, like people that like yeah. Instagram and. Well, you've got to remember when you guys are are like looking for people to follow on social media, you still want to look at credentials. And there's so many yeah. people posting fitness content out there that really have no clue what they're talking about. Right. And, you know, it's still, it's very much up to the consumer to do their homework and research and make sure that you're not following someone because they're cute, but you're following someone because they have credentials, they know what they're talking about. And this is if you're really looking for solid information. Not everybody is. Some people just want to look at cute workout clothes yeah. or whatever. Um, but, but yeah, exactly. And there, there are Instagram celebrity trainers out there that do not have a certification to begin with um, that have never worked with people to, to begin with. So, you know, it's really... It's always going to be up to the consumer. This is a highly unregulated field. And even when you go into gyms, I would say except for big yeah. cities, because yeah. big cities have really cracked down on this, like Chicago, L.A., New York, Miami. Um, they're making sure that their trainers are, certif are appropriately certified. But I live in Tennessee now, and the quality of trainers, I mean, at, at the rush, uh, or not the rush. It turned it turned into Gold's Gym, which is like a popular chain. People there, trainers there, take a weekend course and they can start training people. I mean, it's a weekend course. It's not even a, a certification. I mean, it's it's laughable and it's scary because these are people that are are helping to heal you. I mean, this is we're in the business of healing people and. Um, it's just, it's crazy. So you've got to do, so Stephanie, if you do end up, you know, looking into getting a trainer for that accountability, then you definitely just want to do your homework and make sure of that and ask questions, you know, what kind of certification do you have? Um, yeah. What types of people have you worked with? Um, yeah, ask about their previous clients and what kind of results those clients have gotten, all that stuff. Oh yeah, right. that's a good question. Yeah. Because yeah. like at gyms, like there's one gym I was at, like they will put you with like maybe a trainer that's just starting out and then like the way that they talk to you it's almost like you feel like you can't even ask them those types of questions <laughs> right <laughs> but you can right. you, yeah. you are in charge at that point like yeah. you so. no it's true they're your employee, so, you know, you have the right to say yeah. that. And if they don't want to answer your questions, then you'll be like, see you later. Yeah, no, that's a really, right. really good point. Yeah, I feel like clients almost never, I've actually been shocked how few questions my clients have asked me. Mm -hmm. Like, they just show up and they, totally. like, anything I say, they take it as, like, the word. And I'm like, are you not going to challenge this? Like, I, I want them to ask questions. Right. Have yeah. Yeah. For why they're doing what they're doing, but they never want to hear it because they just totally they don't think that it's right to ask, but it is good to ask. Totally. Right. Yeah. And um. Yeah. No, it's true. So I will take. I will be more in charge. Yeah. Yes. 
Be inquisitive. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, some PTs yeah. are nice, others aren't. I know, I get that. And I feel like in the beginning of my career, I was probably too nice. Like, did you mm-hmm. feel like that, Hannah? Were you ever, like, too nice? As a uh, no. Oh, it's burning? Oh, that's okay. Um, Let's stop, uh, you know. <laughs> like. I, th- I think in the beginning of working with anybody, I'm probably a little more slack nice. until I really get to know, like, yeah, <clears throat> if they're really struggling or if it really is just uh, like something I can push them through. Um, yeah. But I've, I've definitely, I mean, I'm always nice. I'm not like Jillian Michaels, you know, like that's not my approach. That's not my style, but I'm definitely firm. And look, this is your, you, you've hired me because you trust my judgment. And I'm telling you, I know what, I know what you can do. I know. And a lot of times we do after working with people for all, we know better what you're capable of than you, you know what you're capable okay. of. Yeah. So, you do want it to be like a relationship. Yeah, like so. I know, like I've gone to parties and like people do like my cousin, like had a barbecue and Trina showed up at the barbecue and was hanging out. And it's like, God, yeah. Trina, I've met. I would never like, we never like talk about like personal lives like that. Like yeah. I thought that was really yeah. cool, you know? Uh, oh yeah. We definitely get, I'm sure you get a lot into a lot of personal life, Jess. We joke, yeah. we're not only are we personal trainers, but we're therapists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's important to keep in mind that your life, your fitness is part of your life. It's not yeah. like two separate things. Mm-hmm. So things yeah. that are important in your life are going to affect your fitness. And I think it is important for trainers to become part of your life, not just part of your gym scene. You know? Yeah. Totally. Oh, just- just we lost you when you're hiring a trainer too. Is you like this person enough to share your feeling, like you know, be really open. Right, Jess, we yeah. lost we lost video on you. We're only hearing oh, audio. I see, I see Jessica. I see oh, you her. do? That's yeah, weird. Nice it's telling me. I just lost. It's telling me audio only. Oh. Oh well. Well, I can hear you. That's what's important. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank right. you, Lindsay, okay. so much. Thank you for joining, Stephanie. It was like a pleasure having you on and getting your your feedback and your questions. So join us. Yeah, make sure. About, um, oh wait, can you yeah. tell me the, the checklist? You said you said like diet and then protein. You had said Jessica. You said like some like number. You're like, oh, like the number one best source for getting your protein is from actual food. So things like steak, oh, yeah. chicken, seafood, all that. That's Eggs. The number one- for protein mm-hmm. and then whey yeah. protein is the number two best source okay yeah. cool yeah got it so make sure um, you follow us stephanie so you can join some future blabs we blab every yeah, week I will. Yeah. so okay. all cool. right good luck we'll bye. talk to you soon yeah okay, bye. bye ah that was fun um okay so oh, any back. other Oh, what did I disappear? Yeah, you were blocked for a minute there. Oh. Um, okay, so does anybody have any other questions or want to join? Um, otherwise, we've been blabbing for a little over an hour now. So um, we may sign off, um, yes. but not before telling. We didn't talk resolution. So we're going to maybe we'll just get into that uh, after the new year. Actually. Yeah, we'll do that. So, guys. Think happy, Merry Christmas, Ashley, and Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, enjoy your indulgences over the next week because January 1, we're expecting some fitness resolutions. Miss Graham says, wait, you ladies should look up the fat disorder, lip- lipidema. It's a fat disorder. Huh. Have you heard of that, Jess? No, i never heard of that. Well, uh, lipids are fats. So I can guess. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna. I'll, we'll, we'll check it up. it up. We'll look into it. Maybe that sure. can be one of the topics one week. Oh, um, thank you okay, um, for Hi. the feedback. So, guys, if you want more um, blabs, past blabs, go to Jessica's YouTube page. She puts every single yes. blab up. Um, and check out her website at jessicarumba.com. Check out my website at bodybyhanna.com. Make sure you join my newsletter because I am giving away free copies of my Operation Bikini Abs program in the beginning of January. So, um, all right, I might block this Lloyd dude. <laughs> You're blocked. Um, 
so anyway, uh, make sure you check out our training programs online. Get your New Year's resolutions in order. We're going to be talking about them next week and how you can best reach those fitness or nutrition resolutions. And we just want to, we like hanging out with you guys, so make sure you join us. Anything else you want to say, Jess? Um, yeah, I think that's it. Like, just make sure you guys really utilize all the resources that we're offering because um, aside from these labs, we spend so much of our time creating, like, online content and things to help you guys get really super fit. So, like, all of the information that we touched on today, there's so much more if you dig a little deeper. So definitely go to um, just rumba.com bodybyhanna.com liveleantv.com um, there's so many resources so send us a tweet you can always tweet either me or hannah any day of the week yeah. and ask us fitness questions or ask us for the links to those resources um, don't be shy right right awesome so thank you guys again happy holidays uh yes. make sure you're you're following us on blab to find out when our next one will be and yes, we'll, thank you guys so much for being here. It's like awesome to hang out with you. Yes, and we will see you again soon. Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy